Hey everyone. Trying to get uh, Chef Mel on here with me. So give us a moment to uh, to figure this out. It's our first vegan cook-off. Pretty excited about that. Hey Sophie, Sylvie, thanks for joining us. We have some fun stuff planned. All right, let me see if I can get Chef Mel on here. Okay. Okay, I keep inviting her. She is. Oh, can you see my full picture? Because I can only see half of me. I can only see your bottom half. So I thought okay. I have to adjust okay, let me flip it around. I was uh, expecting to be a little higher up. Okay, one second. I think I can pull it. All right. Oh, no, that's not better. <laughs> oh. Let me see here. <laughs> Maybe just lift up your phone and put them on some books or something. That's what I did. Yeah, I don't know. Nessa here. Adam. Oh, there we see Mel's kitchen. There we go. Oh. Hey, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Wow, this is Hi. Linda from Zengary coming at you from uh, the Zengary kitchen. And we have a special guest with us today, Mel Bowdens, formerly from hello, Grow Your Roots Cafe, who uh, has started a new page for Grow Your Roots. Yeah. So you want to tell us what Grow Your Roots is up to these days? Yeah, um, so I joined up with my friend Sarah, who also owns the Sweet Sanctuary Animal Farm and Rescue. Um, we actually met through the restaurant, and Sarah and I came together to make what is now Grow Your Roots Foods. And essentially, we make uh, baking and savory mixes um, that were inspired by the previous Grow Your Roots restaurant. So for example, um, one of our most popular dishes that was at the restaurant was the Tofu Eggs Benny. Um, so now in order for everyone to make it at home, you can get one of our Hollandaise mixes, which is what is found in the Zengiri brunch box. Um, only takes a few ingredients, just like the rest of our mixes, um, to add to the dry mixes to make a hollandaise sauce. And then we have an egg seasoning that helps make uh, like a tofu egg or a tofu egg scramble. And um, then we have lots of other mixes to um, our burger mix, our chicken mix. And then we have some sweet ones as well, like our rainbow cake mix, our lemon loaf, and then some seasonal ones too. So Basically, they're restaurant quality and inspired mixes for everyone to make at home. Amazing. So you can find out more about those at growyourroots.ca. And yeah, and grow your roots. Online. So the challenge today, we've put together uh, some bundles. And one of the bundles that we have on our online store is our brunch bundle. Now, Mel... I don't know what your experience has been since uh, becoming plant-based, but brunch was one of my biggest challenges when I transitioned from a vegetarian diet to a plant-based diet. Because everything in the brunch has eggs in it or bacon or, or milk or something like that. So this brunch bundle I put together to make brunch plant-based brunches super easy. So the challenge yeah. today was to use some of those things from the brunch bundle to create a brunch recipe. So I'll show you what we have in the brunch bundle. We have uh, three of our Zengary cheeses, our new blueberry and lavender. 
Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Drop that one. The horseradish and dill, which is one of my favorites, and I'm going to be using that one today. And the spicy nice jalapeno. Ooh, you're using the horseradish and dill? Yeah, and it's one of my favorites too because I love horseradish and like horseradish in anything. Yeah, yeah. And then we have some great um, local products. Like I mentioned, Mel's Best Ever Hollandaise Sauce is in there. Something that I've been enjoying quite a bit and is also in my recipe, Save to Sea, which is a smoked salmon made out of carrots. And then our friends over in Toronto, Sausage Party, make this awesome vegan bacon. So it's a C10 based bacon, very, very good. This one is maple smoked. And then Excitables is a cute company from uh, New Brunswick, I believe. And this started off as a university project and she pitched uh, to and got some funding and now she's on the shelves in, in Sobeys out in the Atlantic provinces. So that's also in the brunch bundle. One more thing is my friend Will makes these awesome gluten-free oat bagels and they are in high demand and we have some in our brunch bundle today. So, what are you making today? R&D, actually, uh, we rent a kitchen space for Gory Foods and R&D is actually one of our kitchen neighbors. <laughs> they're always in there baking and it always smells so good when they're baking in there. <laughs> yes, yes, I've tried their bagels and their breads and they're super good. They are uh, magical, actually. I think they use sprouted grains and all kinds of great things, so you can check them out. So Mel, what are you cooking for us today? So I am doing a savory waffle. Um, and I used, would you, like, do you want me to go first? And, or do you want to go ahead? You go first? You can go first. Oh, okay. 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 So I'm making a savory waffle, which I'm just going to go put that, I'm just going to put it on now because um, it'll cook while I'm talking. Um, so I did a potato egg waffle mm. and I used the egg citables to make the waffle and then it's just a little bit of shredded potato so it's kind of like a hash brown waffle um, and then just a little bit of flour and the usual waffle thing like baking powder baking soda that kind of thing um, and then I've got the Zengari cheese in uh, I've just got a little those the ninja bullet which are great I used to always use the Vitamix and I got a smaller one it's awesome um, and I'm just going to make like a, a savory waffle sauce instead of the usual maple syrup. So I'm just doing Dijon mustard, like lots of tangy things, some capers, and a little bit of caper juice. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of milk, which I always do to my zenberry cheeses to just, like if you're making a, a sauce, just to kind of thin it out. I've noticed you use that in like some of your recipes too. Yes. Just thin it out. Can you use vegetable uh, broth? I'm going to blend that. And then I'm going to top it with, so I didn't have the Save the Sea uh, smoked salmon. So I made some smoked carrot locks instead. Mm. Uh, but obviously super good with either one. Um, so I'm just going to wait for my waffle to cook. And then yeah, do you want to go ahead with yours? I can. I can tell you exactly what I'm making today. I was inspired by Putin week because this week is Putin yeah. week. And seeing as I'm from Montreal, which is a big Putin place, I decided to do a little spin on Putin and I did a breakfast Putin. So I'm starting with um, fries from the chip stand because that's what you would use for your traditional Putin. But I think it would be really great to use tater tots or even hash yes. browns in this recipe. Yeah. So mine is very easy and I prepared it all ahead of time. So I'm going to be done probably before you. Oh, okay. So the hardest part about this dish is the hollandaise sauce. And since Mel made the mix, it made it super easy. So I took a quarter cup of vegan butter and melted it. And then I added two and a half cups of vegan milk. I used oat milk. And then I have this, all of this amazing hollandaise sauce. So I'm going to put 
some of that hollandaise sauce right on top of my fries instead of gravy. Mmm. Now, Mel, I had a question about your hollandaise sauce. Can I freeze it? I've never frozen it before. I've had some people tell me they have and had success with it. Um, I think there is a little bit of separation in it. Um, however, it does last in the fridge for up to five days. So you could also kind of just enjoy it throughout the week. It'll thicken up a little bit. You just use a little bit of um, soy milk to, sorry, my screen's going to time out here. Um, just to use a little bit of extra or whatever plant milk, like you said, milk, just to uh, thin it out a little bit and reheat either on the show top or microwave if you're feeling. Well, Chantal says uh, it was delicious. So that's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Save the Sea smoked salmon on top. So I'll just uh, take out my pieces of smoked salmon. Looks just like salmon that's made out of carrots. And I'm going to top it on there. So this is kind of like your bagel with cream cheese and lox, but in poutine style. A little bit of that. And then I have my uh, capers, of course, because capers are amazing. So I'm gonna just put a few capers on there. Can't see my beautiful poutine because of this split screen thing, but so far it's looking like this. Green onions, so I'm gonna put some of those on top of there. And then of course, I'm going to put on some of our horseradish and dill cheese. One it is my favorite. If you have you tried dipping your potato chips in there, in the horseradish no, and dill? I will now. <laughs> you have to. It's so good. So I'm just going to sprinkle some around there. Still a bit frozen. I like to keep it frozen and just pull it out right before I want to use it. And then uh, just topping it off with some fresh dill, of course. Oh, so good. So there you go, Mel. That's my recipe. Breakfast All right. Poutine. Let's see what you got. I'm going to assemble mine. You guys are going to so... get a chance to vote on your favorite, so. <laughs> Looks Direct so good. Or savory waffles. So I've got my waffle all ready to go, and I also spread on some of the jalapeno um, zenberry cheese on mm. top of there instead of butter on the waffle. And then carrot locks on top. And then I've got um, some fresh tomato. Mmm with breakfast. I love a savory breakfast. Who likes sweet and who likes savory? Put a little comment in the in the chat there and let us know if you prefer savory breakfast or sweet breakfast. And then I've got my kind of uh, hollandaise or not hollandaise um, savory cheese sauce here with the horseradish and everything else that I added. And instead of maple syrup, I'm going to add that on there. And just like you, I've got some fresh dill mm. and some pepper always. All right, there's mine. I don't know. Mm. I would totally eat that. Yum. Savory potato waffle, carrot locks, and savory cheese sauce. Amazing. So we have some votes in, in the in the chat. A lot of savories. We had a sweet there. <laughs> Difficult decision. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I feel sometimes that. and a little bit of savory other times. That that works too. Sometimes you're in the mood for something. But your favorite breakfast, Mel, I see you making it all the time. Your tofu benin. Your tofu benny. Yeah, it is. We always go back to the tofu benny. I would say tofu scramble is probably my second with a little bit of toast, but tofu Benny always my favorite for sure. And so that's the first dish actually that I, you know, when I was, when I first went in, why I chose like the hardest thing, I don't know, but <laughs> it was. 
Yes. <laughs> but you definitely perfected that hollandaise sauce recipe. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So three ingredients in, in perfect hollandaise sauce. And I'm going to try freezing it because there's a lot of it here. Yeah, it does make a lot. So that's why it's good if you do have a group of, of people coming over or if you have a big family. It's really handy. It makes lots. But like you said, you can try freezing it and that's last in the fridge for quite a few. So you can enjoy it all week, many different ways. Amazing. Well, uh, you guys get to decide who the winner of our first cook-off is. So you either vote for my breakfast poutine, which has fries and hollandaise sauce, some smoked salmon, capers, dill, horseradish and dill cheese, and fresh dill on top with green onions. It. Or melt on it. <laughs> Uh, savory potato egg waffle with uh, smoked carrot locks, fresh dill, fresh tomatoes, and a horseradish dill cream sauce. Mmm. Can you share the recipe with us, Mel? Well, I honestly just kind of threw everything together for the sauce, but it's very simple. It's just capers, Dijon, a little bit of any type of plant milk, plus um, half a block of the, the horseradish dill cheese. And uh, well, the potato waffle here. is really simple. It's just a little bit of the egg citables, a little bit of all-purpose flour, and just a sprinkle of baking soda, baking powder, a little bit of garlic and onion powder. And then um, you just take a potato and use your cheese grater mm. to grate that and just add it right into the dough. And it, it kind of cooks along with the waffle. That's amazing. Maybe you could just write down the recipe and share it in your stories, or we could share yeah, it for sure. with our, our audience here, because I know everyone's going to want to make it. Yeah, for sure. I can if you do that. Can. Yeah, I'll put it in the comments. <laughs> I think that's the easiest way to access it. Amazing. So to vote, you have to wait until this live is over, and then we'll share it in our feed on Instagram at Zengary Budge, and then you can vote. You either vote for Chef Mel's savory waffle or Linda's breakfast poutine. So leave your vote in the comments. And then if you wanna get that brunch bundle, you can go to the link in our bio and there's a link for the online store there. If you buy the brunch bundle this week, I'm gonna throw in one of our cute little produce bags. So if you didn't get one of those yet, you get one of those. And uh, there's also all kinds of fun stuff for Valentine's Day on there. You can find lots of more brunch recipes. Mel has some great ideas on her website, so check that out. We also have a lot of recipes on our website. You can just go to our kitchen and then click brunch breakfast. There's lots of inspiration there. Also on Pinterest, we have uh, tons of ideas for vegan brunches and, and breakfasts. So Mel, can uh, you tell us a little bit about your journey to a plant-based diet? What inspired you? Yeah, uh, before I dive into that, I also wanna say too, we did a cooking demo together years back yes. we did a tofu benny with the zengari cheeses too and i think you still have that recipe on your website too we have it on and youtube so you can go oh, even to youtube and you can see exactly how to make the tofu benny and you have some great recipes you had the biscuits that you made and i think you yes. made a lover's beet waffle, waffle. and that recipe yeah. is also <laughs> up on YouTube. So yeah, Mel and I, I barely walked the right thing. I don't know. <laughs> this is not our first time having um, some fun together in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, going vegan. Uh, it was, I think it's like 11 or 12 years ago. I know. I honestly don't know. Um, and I had seen someone else go vegetarian. And the, the way they explained it to me, um, it was for the animals. And then I, so I went, but I'm like, wow, that makes so much sense to just not eat animals. 
um, because you love them. Um, and I think I was vegetarian for a month, and then and then I learned about vegan. I'm like, well, I might I'll just go the whole way if I'm <laughs> going to do it. Kind of a bigger go home attitude. Um, and then I never switched back. So um, for me personally, it, the number one reason why I went vegan was the animals. Um, and then later on, I learned a lot about um, the environmental impact of it um, and, and some health benefits as well. And then shortly after going vegan, I really, I, I couldn't cook. I was a horrible cook before that. Um, but I just kind of got forced into cooking because at the time, you know, there was nothing compared to what there is now at the grocery stores. So I kind of was forced to learn how to cook a lot of stuff like right from scratch. So I just dove into it and started with baking and cooking. And then soon enough, I was selling cupcakes and stuff to friends. And then I came up with the idea of a farmer market stand. And then from there, the restaurant. And now we're here. So it's been a long journey and I wouldn't change any of it. Amazing. And I know that you're an uh, animal lover. Do you want to tell us a little yes. bit about your special animals that you have? Yes, we have three pigs. Um, we have a really small uh, little piece of property outside of Ottawa. Um, and we have three pigs, George and Stephen. Um, they're all rescued kind of in their own way. Um, yeah, and they're just our buddies. They just live out there their best lives, eating grass, mm -hmm. sleeping all day. Um, and then, of course, we have two dogs because I can't without dogs um, who are also from rescues and yeah and then of course like I mentioned my business partner Sarah she's the owner of or one of the owners of the sweet sanctuary uh, just outside of auto as well and they have many many animals so if you are an animal lover I highly recommend following them because they have lots of different faces everywhere so yeah so that's both of our inspiration behind Grow Your Roots as well Amazing. Does anyone have questions for Mel or me? If you have any yeah. questions, pop them in the chat or tell us what or vegan, vegan breakfast recipe you'd want to see us make plant-based. Just pop your comments in there and don't forget that to vote for your favorite brunch recipe, either Linda's breakfast poutine Give you another little shot of that. Or Mel's savory waffle. And what was the sauce that you put on there again? It was made with the horse uh, Yeah, it's like a, a cheesy, um, cheesy savory sauce, I guess we'll call it, with the horseradish and just a little bit of Dijon, some caper and caper brine, and just some salt and pepper. It's really, really simple. Mmm, I'm gonna have to try that. I can't wait to get that recipe. So I made a little reel for my um, breakfast poutine. So it'll be coming up soon and it'll, you'll be able to see exactly how to make your, the breakfast poutine at home. And uh, yeah, anyone else have some questions? Mel's got a little one at home now, new mama. Yep, she's, uh, she's upstairs with dad doing bedtime routine. So hopefully it's going well. <laughs> It's so much fun. It's fun times. I love it when they're little like that and snuggleable. Then they turn two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, we've got a little while to go before that. But I'm really excited for her to start. Uh, we've got a little while to go, but I'm really excited for her to start with solid foods, to start introducing the foods. I just think it'll be so fun. So, hey, we'll why a little bit of a question. Chat. Any tips for going vegan on a budget? Yes, definitely lots of options for going vegan on a budget. I did a couple of lives already. One, I talked about meat alternatives on a budget. So you can take a look there. There's also an article on our website about uh, going vegan on a budget. And that was by one of our guest chefs. So you can check that out. But beans. And, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be uh, expensive. Breakfasts are super easy. It can be toast with avocados. It's all with what you top it with. So um, that's what I think. If you, if you use great flavorful sauces 
and and just get creative with you know bean burritos for breakfast super inexpensive and you can make a lot of your own stuff and that saves you a lot of money how about you mal you have tips for going vegan on a budget yeah i agree with you like the beans because there's so many different types um and and that same buying the dry do not hands because i'll be get a bit pricey in the cans um so lots of different beans chickpeas uh, a big thing that i always recommend is extra protein uh the tpp so it can be made into um uh, like ground ground beef um lots of different things and if you have a bulk barn near you that's the best place to get it it's so so you can get a massive bag for like five dollars it's super cheap um and uh as well as like you said, just using, I think using a lot of dried herbs and stuff like that, because you can get them for a re relative low cost and just using lo lots of spices to, to kind of amp up flavors. Um, and if you can make your own like sauces and cheeses at home too, like simple, you know, the, the potato carrot cheese sauce that everybody knows about, that's a super cheap one. Um, and if you live, in an area, maybe you have a balcony on your condo or something, even just getting something like a little cherry tomato plant or like mm -hmm. a little curd plant, something kind of stay funny. Just a couple little things like that in the summertime too, or even if you, um, with our garden, for example, the leftover tomatoes at the end of the season, we'll just throw them into a tomato sauce and freeze it or something. So just like little tweaks like that, you can do save money as well. For sure. I, I love those tips. Bulk barn is a great tip and gardening for sure is an amazing tip because you can have tons of things. You can freeze it and use it in the winter. Fresh herbs are always at your fingertips. So just get some seeds and start planting things. Especially yeah. Even if you have a little window, fill, you can throw like a little box up on there. You don't need a lot of space to just do a couple little things. Dill is an amazing herb. If you ever plant it in your garden, you will get it growing back every single year. So you only have to yeah. plant it once and then it plants itself over and over again. It's, it's like a weed. So ours went out of control. Last yeah. year. I could not keep up with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good if you're making pickles though, too. You have lots of dill. <laughs> oh yeah. Pickles are amazing. Cool. Anyone else have questions? Wow. I love how we're doing brunch at 7 p.m. <laughs> Say that again. I love how we're doing brunch at 7 p.m. I love it. Yeah. Well, brunch for dinner, I think, is, is how it's the best. Be. Live on chocolate loves dill. We love dill. We just, I put it on everything. Another one of my favorite things to do is to make a chickpea salad. It could be like a tuna or a chicken or an egg kind of flavor, yes. depending on how you season it. I bet you could use your egg seasoning in there, Mel. If you, you mash up your chickpeas, I cut up some dill pickles, put in some dill, yep. some vegan mayonnaise. Uh, sometimes I shred up some carrots to put in there. And then you mix it all up. You use this black salt if you want an egg flavor. You can use dulse or seaweed if you want a fishy type flavor or tuna type salad. And um, if you want like a chicken, you can use like uh, poultry seasoning in there instead. So lots of ideas. Yeah. Question I think I have a website uh, or on my website too, I have a curried chickpea mash as well. We used to mm. sell it at the restaurant. It's really good. It's just kind of different something. Um, with like walnuts and dried cranberries and stuff. So that's another one then too. And of course, tofu is super, super cheap. So if you want to make a tofu egg salad, that's another easy, quick one that will last all week in the fridge. Someone was asking if we had any soup recipes. There's definitely soup recipes on our website. You can check that out. I have some favorite soup recipes. One of the ones that I really love is called Glam Chowder from... Um, Lisa Sean wrote Moskowitz. She's from the Punk Kitchen, I think. Love her. She's amazing. She is one of the pioneers in vegan cookbooks. I just love her. Do you have some soup recipes on? Uh... Yep. I have a few on my website. 
Uh, one of my favorites is butternut squash apple soup that was mm -hmm. uh, with caramelized onions. Um, but yeah, I have a few on there and we have a really good classic chicken noodle soup on the Grow Your Roots website as well. So that's super good. But yeah, the, mm -hmm. one of the things I love about soup though is you just kind of, you can just go rogue with it. Like use whatever you have in the cupboard or in the fridge that you need to use up. Start with some celery, onions, and carrots and, and just go from there with what you have. I, don't, I think it's one of those things that's really hard to mess up. So just add whatever you love into it. Sounds like we'll have to do a soup cook-off one of these days. Yes, yes. Before spring gets here. And then yeah, yeah, awesome. our soup's kind of out so. <laughs> Wow, so any other questions before we, uh, ooh, love your corn chowder recipe, Mel, so good. That's from Leslie. Some love for Mel. Nice. Yeah. And, and I I just posted a reel for soup too. So I know people like to see the reels, like so you can see exactly what you're doing. Always have that. Um, so there's one on my page as well, um, soup on there. Oh, you know what? The dill pickle soup is on my website. That used to be one of the top sellers at the restaurant. It sounds weird. I know dill pickle in a soup, but I'm telling you, you have to try it. Okay. Well, I think everybody wants to see a soup cook off. So I think maybe that's going to, come up one of these days. Love it. So just a reminder before we sign off, you guys uh, wait until the live is over and then you'll be able to vote for either the breakfast poutine, Linda's breakfast poutine, or uh, Mel's savory waffle. Beautiful. So Mel was a little awesome. fuzzy there. So maybe you want to take a picture and, 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 and send it over. Because I, I don't know if your internet connection is a little. It could be. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty far. <laughs> I know what it's like. We're in the country too, but we've just got some good internet not too long ago, less than a year ago. So it's kind of life changing. Tanessa's liking that dill pickle soup idea. Go check it's it so out good. on the website. Okay. It would be so even better with your, your dill cheese in it too, I bet. Oh, I'll have to try that. Mm. Yeah. So lots of brunch recipes for you guys uh, on Pinterest, on Mel's website, on our website. You can sign up for the newsletter. We always have lots of recipes in the newsletter and you get the free uh, cookbook if you sign up for the newsletter. So don't forget to vote. Thank you so much, Mel, for being here for our live tonight. And uh, may the best brunch win. <laughs> yeah best of luck thanks everyone for tuning in for us bye everyone see you next monday bye. at seven o'clock